okay and let me just share the screen share screen one right so i hope uh, things are visible <clears throat> Okay, so this is just a brief uh, overview about pointers and the code with it. So the credit goes to the title associates. I got this code from GitHub, right? So in this, we have just the int main, right? Uh, you can either return zero or you can remove this also. Anything is okay. We can just return zero, right? So we are declaring integer a as seven and then we have integer asterisk aptr right so basically the variable is like pointer to a right so whenever you see a star that basically means that this is a special variable right so a aptr is a special variable that does not hold any particular integer value but it holds the address right so that is the meaning of this variable star star basically indicates a pointer pointer and address basically are both the same things Right, it is always better to remember address because you know that is a more intuitive to understand. So when I say star aptr is equal to ampersand a, as we have already seen, ampersand a for address, a for ampersand. That means in some memory location a is stored. So let me just get back to the board. So our standard notation. So let's say the value of a in this case is seven, right? A is equal to seven. So somewhere in the memory location. 7 is stored and the variable a is assigned to it. Now, as all of you know, you all are staying at your home right now, right? Every home has a unique address, right? No two homes on this earth can have exactly the same address, right? The address will be different, dif different for each one of you. Even though they are neighbors, the flat number changes. Same goes for computer memory also. Every variable that you store goes into a separate memory location, fine? Now I'm declaring integer star aptr is equal to ampersand a. So let me just change the pen color to let's say something purple. And let's say at some memory location, you can just assume this is like your home address, right? This is your home address. So this address is at memory location 1000. Now I know if I want to access 7, I can directly say printf. Right, percent D, and I can print the value of A. But what if I need this particular address? Right, so if I need this particular address, there should be some mechanism to access this address, and that mechanism is ampersand A. So if you just simply write A, that means it's the value itself. If you write ampersand A, this implies the address. Right. So I'm just briefly going through the concepts once again. And for example, now if you want to access A, you can do by two methods. Either you can just print F A as I told you, or you can write print F. See, ampersand A basically provides you the address of A. And there is a special operator which is known as asterisk, which basically is known as the content at address A. So star basically, okay, let me just change it to black. star means content at whatever is in the bracket and ampersand means address of whatever is the variable right so now let us read the sentence together so when i say ampersand star a so what i mean by ampersand i mean content at and whatever is following the star what is following the star ampersand a so that means content at ampersand a again writing content at what is ampersand a address of whatever is following it so the whole sentence becomes content at address of whatever follows what is following this <coughs> basically um, uh, address of a basically variable a so what was the address of this the address of variable a address of variable a was 1000 and what is the content at 1000 so content at 1000 is nothing but 7 itself right 
So now one small thing which I forgot to mention in the previous class uh, when we did last time. So let me just execute this code. So when I execute this code, you can see I'm printing the value of ampersand A and APTR. Basically, <coughs> both will be same, right? APTR basically is equal to ampersand A. Star does not mean anything. Star only says to the compiler that this APTR will hold memory address. That's it. It will hold memory address, right? And see, memory address can have characters also. Memory address can store string also. Memory address can store float also, long, double, everything. But when I say integer star APTR, that means APTR will store an address. So just let me write in the comment. APTR will store an address. That is definitely because it is star APTR. But that address points to an integer. Right? I am written capital integer because basically it is an end pointer. So that means that this particular address will have a value which contains an integer. Right? So basically when I am printing the value of ampersand A or APTR, <clears throat> it prints, uh, see, the address of A is 6422300 and APTR, which is nothing but ampersand A, is again the same value, 6422300. When you compile, you may get a different value because the memory ma allocation is done by the operating system. So you may get some random value here, but irrespective, both these values will be same. Now, how do you print the value of A? As we have already seen, either you can directly refer the variable A or you can say that, okay, star APTR, right? As I have already told you, just let me do a next. So whenever you see a star and an ampersand, they basically cancel out each other. It is something to sort of multiplication and then dividing, right? So you, if you are doing A multiplied by B and then divide by B, so you can see that this whole things get cancelled. So now let us come back to the code. So whenever I write, I write star APTR, right? So when I am writing star APTR and what was APTR? APTR was ampersand A right so star and ampersand cancel each other so what remains a and what was the value of a a was nothing but 7 so similar thing happens here so you can see the value of a is 7 that we studied in the lecture 1 and when you are doing star aptr so aptr basically is ampersand a remember that aptr gets the value ampersand a right not the star this thing gets the value this whatever i have highlighted star is a notation that APTR will be holding an address, fine. Now, the third output basically is showing that, showing that star and ampersand are complement of each other. So whether you print ampersand star APTR or star ampersand APTR, it does not matter. It is one and the same thing, right? So you can see in both the cases, the output basically is the same, fine. So second program is just pass by value. I will just quickly go through this. I think you already all know this because we have implemented functions. So let me clear the screen. So the value is phi, the original number. And when I pass this cube, I am passing the number phi in this cube function. And in the cube function, basically I'm just printing the value of n into n into n, right? So I can even write here, let's say n is equal to Let me just bring this here and then print the value of n. So you can see the value of n in the main was 5. The value in the function is 125, but the value again back to main is again 5. Why? Because this is pass by value. So as we know in pass by value, what happens? You have a main. You are passing the value n to the cube function and this is the cube function. And even though this is an integer n here, which is having the same variable name, the memory allocation will be different. This n will have a value phi. And when I change the pen color, 
and this n is allocated a separate memory location where it is 125 so these two have no linkage with one another right so in pass by value what happens for every variable there is exact copy created there is an exact copy created as we have already seen. So if you are having 10 variables, so basically the values of 10 variables will be again copied. The changes are made to the Xerox or to the photocopy of it and no, and nothing changes in the main. Again, the next example was basically when you pass by reference. Now when you pass by reference, you basically pass ampersand number. That means I am passing the address of that particular number. Right. So when you pass the address of that particular number, what happens is this is just a brief uh, overview to all of you. So I have a number here. Let's say it is 5. This is our main. And the memory location is 1000. So ampersand number is nothing but 1000. Now when I have a cube function here, that takes integer star number. So what happened? Ampersand number gets passed to it. So basically I am passing 1000 to it. And I am saying that, okay, whatever is the value at that particular address, modify it with the actual value. So what happens in the memory location when I write, it is star number into star number okay you may see too many of multiplication so this star is basically multiplication operator and this star is basically the content fine so when you multiply this what actually happens is you go on the memory location 1000 and then basically let me write star number into star number right so what happens here since it's a memory reference and I pass 1000, so what I'm saying, content at 1000, content at 1000, which was nothing but basically this particular memory address. So now what it is happening, phi into phi into phi is again stored at location number 1000. So basically, over time, this memory location is overwritten with a value of 125, right? <coughs> So now some new stuff, we have some pointer arithmetic. So now let's say when we do a simple mathematics, we also do addition, subtraction and all these things. So you can also do pointer arithmetic. So what do I mean by pointer arithmetic? So we have a value n is equal to 4 and I'm defining two pointers, star ptr and star ptr2. <clears throat> what happens here, I am assigning the value of pointer 1 to the address of n. So basically n is stored somewhere in the memory and that particular address of n. So let me just get back to the board. So n is some variable in the memory. Right. So let me just make it. What was the value? The value of n is 4. And assume the ampersand n, right, which is the address of n in the memory is 1000. So now what I am doing, PTR1 and PTR2, right? So basically these are holding address. Why these are holding address? Because we have an asterisk with it. So what do we do? So PTR1 will have a value 1000. PTR2 will have a value 1000, right? Because both of them point to the address of N, which is nothing but 1000 in our case. So what I am doing, pointer 1 before increment, right? So let me do what happens with an increment. So I am printing f the value of ptr1. So let us just execute this code. So what happens? Pointer 1 before increment is 64.22.292, right? So some memory location address is given to this. So in our case, it was 1000. In compiler's case, it became 64.22.292. Now see what I am doing here. I am incrementing the pointer ptr1++. Now, in normal case, let's say if I do n++, so what would happen? The value of n will become from 4, it will become to 5 at this step, fine. But see now what happens in pointer. So, ptr1 basically had the value 64222292. Now, you have incremented the pointer. 
So what happens after you increment the pointer? You can see the pointer value after increment is 6422296, right? And not 93. So I <clears throat> now why does this happen actually? So let me just tell you. So what happens now? Actually, you know that this is an integer pointer. Right, it's an integer pointer. Let me just go back to here. Now, integer takes how many bytes in the memory? Integer takes four bytes in the memory. Right, so basically, if I have a variable here like 1000, so this four actually will take four memory spaces. So you can assume like it, these are boxes, right? So the variable four will take four memory boxes to store. So now when you are doing an increment, right? So when you are doing an increment to a pointer, pointer is nothing but an address. So basically this is nothing but an address increment. So now just uh, visualize this. What do we mean by address increment? It means that right now I am storing an integer at a location 1000. Right now, I am storing an integer at a location 1000. When I increment the pointer, what is the next location where I can store another integer? Right? What is the next location where I can store another integer? So just take an example like this. For example, let's say your building has 10 floors. Right? And every floor has two flats. So usually what is the numbering? On the first floor, it will be 101, 102. On the second floor, it will be 201, 202. Usually the first number is indicative of the floor. And then the serial number resumes. So now if you see, if you do a 102 increment, the next flat to 102, it's not 103, but it is 201. Same is the case here. How much memory does an integer take place in the memory? Basically, integer takes 4 bytes. So now you can see, pointer was to an integer type, right? So when you increment a pointer, see pointer is nothing but an address. So when you increment an address, the address will get by the incrementation of how much space it is taking in the memory. So how much space an integer takes in the memory? 4 bytes. So you can see the increment here is of 4 bytes. Similarly, I have the same program for decrement also. So now the pointer value was like in this case, it is 296. Just see the last three digits. Now, when you decrement, same thing will happen. It will decrement by 4. To see another example, instead of int, let me use here long. Right. So, let me just see. I had a program for size of. Yeah. Guys, this is a program for size of. I am just running here because so that you can get an idea of the sizes. So, size of character is 1 byte. Right, size of integer is 4 byte, right? Size of double is 8 bytes, right? So you can see here size of double is 8 bytes. So now let me come back to this particular code and make integer as so I'm just replacing integer by double, right? So an in integer, you just remember these two figures 292, 296, because an integer took 4 bytes in the memory. Now I'm replacing integer by double. Right, so everything now is double. So now you will see that this particular address is incremented by 8. Why? Because double takes 8 bytes in the memory. Let me just execute the code. So now do you see? When I ran the same code with a double, you can see this is 288 is the first location. And when I do an increment here, I do a PTR++, the value basically goes to 296. Why 296? Because now the pointer is a type double and double occupies 8 bytes in the memory, right? So the increment was 8. Similarly, the decrement again was of 8. So just remember whatever is a size. So for example, if I take a character pointer, that is 1 byte. So when you increment it, it will increment by just 1. So now if we see in this example, long double is 12 bytes. So let me just replace double by long double, fine. And now in this case, you can see the increment and decrement will be by 12. So you can see from 272 to 284, what is the difference? We have a difference of 12 bytes.
so i hope this is clear so whenever you are doing pointer arithmetic the first step to see is that what kind of data type the pointer is holding whether it's an integer whether it's a long whether it's a double or anything else depending on that when you increment or decrement the sizes will matter so basically a generic pointer which is of k bytes right k is unknown to us if it is of k bytes then the increment and decrement will happen in steps of k that is what you need to remember so we can have a small break here for 5 minutes class and then we will resume the class now doubts are of course well okay class so uh, next again we are beginning with the pointer arithmetic itself so now what happens so we saw the increment of a pointer so now again back to a similar example how do we add pointers right so again we have two pointers ptr1 and ptr2 both are assigned this value of n to this so n basically is 4 so now what i am doing i am adding the pointer 2 so let us assume that this pointer has a value of 1000 basically the address of n is 1000 what happens when you add a value 3 to it So now let us run the code and see the example. Fine. Now you can see that, for example, this was the initial address, right? So pointer two before addition. So what I am displaying, I am displaying the value of pointer two. So pointer two basically is nothing but having the value six four triple two two nine two. Now when I am adding three to this particular pointer, so that means. internally what it sees because see ptr2 is a pointer variable right basically it is holding an address so when i do a ptr2 plus 3 it basically implies that i need the location where i can store the third pointer from this location basically the third integer from this location so if you see the output basically an integer basically takes four bytes in the memory so when i am adding 3 to a pointer internally basically it means it will add 3 into k bytes right so for int we have 4 bytes so it will be 3 into 4 which is equal to 12 bytes so when you do a pointer arithmetic the normal mathematical arithmetic does not work everything depends on the how much space that particular pointer is taking right so in this case it's ptr2 is an integer pointer and integer takes 4 bytes in the memory so when you add pointer plus 3 that means it will internally add 3 into k bytes where k is the size of the variable in this case it's an integer variable so 3 into 4 12 so you can see from 292 it goes to 304 again if you want to see the case of long double so let me just do a long double so long double takes 12 bytes in the memory so when i do plus 3 so 3 into 12 will be 36 so in this case it will be added by a value 36 right so you can see from 272 it went to 308 so this is how pointer arithmetic works so it's not difficult just see first of all okay we are adding ptr 2 plus 3 so i know if it is n then it will become n into k bytes now what is ptr2 ptr2 is of type long double long double takes 12 bytes so it will be 12 into 3 36 so it's simple only but of course uh, very useful because at times we need to do pointer arithmetic while working with string arrays that we will see tomorrow <clears throat> again the same example if you are doing subtraction then it's an integer pointer it will be reduced by 3 into 4 which is 12 so you can see 292 on the decrement of 3 bytes becomes 280 because 3 into 4 12 292 minus 12 is 280 so let's say if i do here 5 in this case it will be 5 into 4 20 so it will reduce by 20 so 292 and 272 okay so this again is just a very uh, standard example and this is basically showing the both the things right so increment and decrement so this is a self study program 
now back to something which you have already studied but just revising through is const right so what does const means so const basically is used if you want that a variable should never be changed throughout the program execution even accidentally right so a very good example is something a float pi right the value of pi should never change during the program execution so what happens here is like so when i run the code so let me first try to comment this out so i am just printing the value of pi let me do a cls so you can see the value of pi is 3.14 now what happens so let's say if i remove the keyword const and then let's say i change the value of pi as 8.14 so nothing the program will just change the value and just display the value so you can see the value of pi was 3.14 and the next value of pi is 8.14 so the program is allowing me to change the value of pi which is something of a universal constant which should not be allowed right so to do that what the c allows you is to use the keyword variable called const so by const we mean constant right so constant says that now this value of pi cannot be modified throughout the program the compiler itself will throw an error let us just see this so you can see error assignment to a read only variable pi right so basically assignment to pi is not allowed one thing to remember is like even if you try to reassign the same value right see pi was 3.14 and i am just reinitializing it to the same value even that is not allowed right so see it says assignment to a read only pi right so why did i do, do the const thing is because from the next program we will see something which is working on the strings and when you are working on the strings the use of const is very common in c right so normally when you work on string you do string operations like you can add two strings together like happy and birthday these are two strings i can combine them into happy birthday right or happy and birthday we can try to reverse the string in all the cases is it it is usually required that the original string should not be touched right so that is why we use the keyword known as const so let us see an example here so here we have to include this c type dot h c type dot h is nothing but a library in c that supports uh, various string operations right and it has a very rich library so let us just see we have a function here convert to upper case and we are passing a character pointer that means sptr will basically store a address right so whenever you see a star just assume that the variable following it contains a memory location that's it as simple as that so now we have integer main so what we are doing we are defining a character string right so when you define a character string it's an array you can see it's a string array and you need not specify the subscript right because the c compiler auto calculates the value of the subscript how it does that it basically counts everything here right and remember one thing whenever you are dealing in strings every string ending has a special character slash zero so the quotes are not there just a simple slash zero and slash zero is a single character right even though there are two things in it backslash and zero slash zero is treated as a single character so whenever you are working with strings even though you do not specify you can actually also specify something like this it is still workable and it is nothing wrong in it but there is no need to do because the compiler will automatically add the c compiler adds to it so now what this program does is converts this particular string to a upper case right so how do we do that we just call this function and pass the string this string is nothing but this particular characters and dollar 32.98 now what we do is like whenever you are passing a string as you know whenever we pass an array it is automatically passed as reference what do i mean by passed as reference this string wherever it is stored in the memory the base address will be passed so what do i mean by base address let us just go here so we have a character string here which says characters and dollar 32.98 so what happened string is an array because we have the right parenthesis here so in the memory 
because a character take one block at a time so i'm just writing it like this characters and <coughs> so in the memory this is represented like this for space also one block is given and so on right so string basically so let's say this particular memory address is 2000 so when i am passing string to the function that means i am passing this is the start address so whenever i am passing string to a function that means i am passing convert to uppercase string so what i am passing convert to uppercase string this implies i am passing here what is string string is nothing but the base address however long the string is we only pass the initial base address the initial which is also called the base address Now, since you are passing the address, if you need to access the content, what we can use? We can use our friend asterisk, right? So that is what we are using. String is passing 2000 and we are using asterisk to basically access it. Fine. So now what happens here? What I'm doing here while content of SPTR. So now you see what happens. Initially, star 2000 will print C, right? Then we increment the address as you saw in the previous uh, examples. When you increment an address, what happens? Basically, it was a type of character, right? You can see here plus plus SPTR. So now SPTR is a pointer, right? Because here it is a star. And what kind of pointer? Pointer is of character type. How much space character takes in the memory? Character takes one space. So basically one byte, sorry. Character takes one byte in the memory. So this increment will basically be done by one byte. So what happens? This 2000 when incremented will become 2001. And what is star at 2001? Content at 2001 is H. Then again we increment. Again on increment what happened? It points to A which is nothing but 2002. Then we increment 2002 to 2003. This happens. It comes to asterisk. So this is how you keep on moving forward and at the end, as I said, what happens? The compiler basically assigns an internal end of string, which is known as slash zero, right? right? So this slash zero basically indicates the end of string. So here basically we are doing the same thing. We are incrementing the pointer one at a time and then we are converting it to an uppercase using this function to upper. This to upper function is basically defined in C type. Right? So, and what we are making the uppercase is star SPTR. As I told, what is star SPTR? Star basically will point to the content. So it is reading character by character and making it uppercase. Right? So just let us see the code. So you can see for your convenience, I'm just showing you how it works. The string before conversion is this. You can see it has a mixed character and numbers. So character read in SPTR before doing uppercase, right? So before doing uppercase, what happens? Then I do a uppercase and then what happens after uppercase? So see, small c was read and then it became capital C. Similarly, it goes on like this. C, H, A, R, A, C, T, right? So why did I do this particular printf and put a slash in? Because in this case, remember that the string is being read character by character. Why character by character? Because once we point to the base address, we are incrementing at every step. And since it's a character variable, it will increment only by steps of one. And that's it. So this is how it works, right? So just remember this particular thing, whenever you are defining a character array, it will define to the, it will point to the base address. 
and then you keep on incrementing and every character array or every string right string is nothing but a character array will end at slash zero automatically and that is why we are matching with this that while end of the string is not equal to slash zero even though our string does not contain slash zero the compiler will automatically add to it right so this was the program on string uppercase now we have this particular program so basically we have a non constant pointer to a constant data so basically we have seen the const function right so now we just see the application of it right so we have a, in, a string here india is my country uh, puts basically is a function that can use to it is similar to printf right so you can also use the printf function both are basically the same it is just to dump a particular string variable directly right so what i am doing i am calling the function print characters right so when i am passing the print characters i am passing this particular string that means i am passing india is my country but since it's a character array basically address of the base address of string is passed base address of string is passed right base address is passed because by default arrays are always passed by reference whether it's an integer array float array or double array right now you just see the difference here if i show you the previous code in the previous code i just had character star sptr right and in the next example you can see we have const character star ptr now what the difference does it take place right so you already know that in the string basically we are passing 2000 that is the base address the base address is copied to sptr right now just see the position of const here the position of const is before character right position of const is before the character now that means this particular string which i am passing right india is my country this is now const like a pipe so i cannot modify this original string i will show you an example first so let me just clear this particular string right so what i am doing here basically again like the last time i am just reading the whole string one character at a time and i am displaying the string right i am doing slash n here so that you realize that the string is basically being read character by character i n d i a then space india is my country fine now what does this const basically do right so imagine you are writing a very big piece of code and you want that some strings should never be modified you do not want anybody altering this particular string at all right india is my country should remain like this so when i am using the keyword const that means this particular text can never change so now let us write a code to modify this right so what i am doing see sptr basically contains the base address right so just let me go to the next page so sptr contains like a base address which is 2000 right so it is something like india is my so you can assume one byte boxes here for everything so this is the base address right base address is 2000 so now basically when i do this particular thing sptr of 0 that means what i am doing i am referring to the first index this is zero the basic arrays that you studied right so what i am defining this base of zero is m that means this string should now become this m india right because i am modifying the first index right and it is very much possible because i am passing the base address right arrays are always passed by reference so any changes here will actually take place in the directly in the main string 
right now just see this program will throw an error right you can see sptr of 0 is equal to m why because assignment of a read only location sptr right why read only location because this particular string was made a constant in the function now let me remove this particular const keyword right let me remove this const keyword and then run again see now it does not give an error and you can see the string is modified here instead of india it has become m and d i a why because i had modified the string here right so now you can just realize if you are writing a very big code on text processing and you want that your source code or your source string should never be modified you always use the const function right so whenever you use the const function what happens is like it does not allow even any accidental changes see some changes are accidental some are like done with a bad intention in mind right so that is why const is used right so now const can be the string itself or the pointers also can be const which we will see in the next lecture in the next uh, program so let us come back to the pointer 7 example <coughs> Right. So in pointer example here, what happens here is like I have a mean, I am defining y is equal to 15. Right. I am defining y is equal to 15. And in this particular function, I am passing ampersand y. That means I am passing the address of y. So let's say we have y is equal to 15. So in the memory location, y is 15 and assume ampersand y is 2000. So I am passing this 2000 into the function, right? Now see what I'm doing here. I am having const and what I'm passing here integer star PTR, right? So basically ampersand y was passed, which gets copied to xptr. So basically xptr is equal to ampersand y. That means xptr is equal to 2000. And what will be star xptr content at 2000, which is nothing but 15, right? So now you know that this particular thing is nothing but the value 15, which is nothing but an integer. So what I'm doing here, I am making this integer constant. That means my function cannot change the value of y, right? So as you have seen, as you have seen here, xptr is nothing but basically it's a pointer to this particular value. Now you can see in this particular case, I am trying to modify xptr to 100. So what I am trying to do, I am trying to modify this value to 100. Right? But this is not allowed. Why? Because in my case, we had made this particular value as const. Right? So this is basically known as non-constant pointer to a constant data. Why constant data? Just look at the position of the keyword const. Const here is before the integer. So that means this particular value, which is an integer value, is a constant. In the next program, so basically when you execute this, you again get an error actually. Right? Cannot modify a const object. If you want to modify the const object, remove this particular const so now it is no longer a constant and you can see here the value is modified right so you can even print the value of y in the mean to see the changes right initial value was 15 because i didn't put a slash in here let me just add a slash in new value so you can see 15 and the new value is 100 right so this is how const basically works so it's a very useful concept because at times you do not want any improper or illegitimate or accidental modification to your code so that is why you use the const variable now this program basically again a very short program basically attempting to modify a constant pointer to a non-constant data. Now, what do I mean by constant pointer? Now, let us see this very small piece of code. We have integer x and integer y. 
fine. So I am defining pointer as ampersand x, right? So basically this pointer basically will contain the address of the variable x, right? So let me just give x a value 2 initially. So let us back to the scratch board. So let me just do a next here. So what happens x is equal to 2 so definitely x will be stored somewhere in the memory location and it may be having a memory address let's say 1500 right which is equal to nothing but ampersand of x so now just see where is the position of const in the previous case this const was before the int right this const was let me just write it here const integer star xptr and in the case of 8 it is this was the previous case And in this particular case, let me just give a new pen color. This I am writing as int star const ptr. Just check this particular line of definition. So what happens here in the previous case, it was integer star ptr. So this was the integer value, right? This was the integer value this integer value is made constant right and what happens in this particular case i am having a pointer here i am having a address variable and i am making the address constant right so this is address is const the value is const right i hope you get the subtle difference here just check the position of const here. This const is before the integer. That means the value is a constant value. This const is basically following the pointer value, right? What does star means? Star basically means nothing but an address or a pointer. Remember address, easier to remember. So it means integer address constant. That means address is constant here. So now just check this out. We have x equal to 2, let's say y is equal to 8, fine. So now what I am doing here, I am assigning the ptr is equal to ampersand x, right? So this is nothing but ptr. So ptr is equal to ampersand x is equal to 1500, right? So we have x is equal to 2, ptr is equal to ampersand x. The memory location here I am assuming as 1500. So basically PTR is equal to 1500. Now we know that PTR basically is const in this case. So see what I am doing star PTR equal to 7. Now what will happen here? What is PTR? PTR is 1500, right? What is star PTR? This is star of 1100, right? star of 1100 is nothing but this. So this 2 gets overwritten by 7. Okay, I just missed the alignment. This was 2. Ampersand x is equal to 1500, which is nothing but PTR. So when I do star PTR, that means I do star 1500, which is equal to 7. That means this 2 is now becoming the value 7, which is perfectly allowed. But now just see the next case. PTR is equal to ampersand y. It says error. PTR is constant. Now let me, let me just execute the code. It will basically pop up an error. You can see PTR is const. So here what I am doing, I am trying to give PTR, which is an integer pointer, the address of y. See, in the starting, PTR was given the address of x and made constant. Now, since it is constant, now PTR cannot be given any other value. 
just like we did for const pi right so that is the case in this particular case so you are assigning ptr x now you made this as const so now when you do ptr is equal to ampersand y this will give an error why it will give an error because ptr was a const right so in the previous case you saw you made a integer constant and now you made a pointer constant so last program for today where both the pointer and the data is constant so you can see the declaration here i am making x equal to 5 let's say y is equal to 9 what happens here i am having see const integer and pointer const ptr so this means for particular value of x let me just change it to next for a particular value of x let's say the value of x is 5 so what i am doing here const integer right see the position of const const is before the integer so that means this phi is also read only and then i am saying pointer constant that means address is also constant now ptr contains ampersand x so what is ampersand x let's say this memory location is 1500 so now since we have asterisk const that means this is also now read only right this is basically the address right since both are constant now you cannot even modify the value and you cannot even modify the address so as an example let us just try to execute here we will have two errors here right star ptr is const so cannot assign a new value ptr is const so again cannot assign a new address right so the takeaway here is just look at the keyword const right before integer it means the value is constant following a pointer it means the pointer variable basically the variable holding the address is constant right so both of these have a huge huge application with respect to strings right so i think for today we are done the time is over i will upload the lectures on youtube you can watch it there also any doubts queries are welcome Okay, class, if there are no doubts, I think uh, then we can stop it. Thank you, class.